Hey guys, it's your favorite girl, the queen of fun and fast cooking, and I'm here with another delicious recipe. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this yummy Nigerian snack popularly known as rock buns. Bam, there is no one on planet Earth that will try this and not love it. And what's most exciting is it requires very few ingredients and can be ready in 30 minutes or less. Let's get right into it. Welcome to another episode of the delicious cooking series. Now this episode is Winnie's birthday edition. <laughs> it was my birthday yesterday, 1st of May. I have lots of cakes behind me as you can see. And I also received lots and lots of messages from some of you. Your heartwarming messages were really, really, really um, amazing. I literally made my day yesterday and I just want to use this opportunity to say a really big thank you to all of you who sent a message to me. You definitely made my day totally worth celebrating. Anyways, the recipe I'm going to share with you guys today is my special gift to you all to continue the best day celebration. It's one of my favorite Nigerian local snacks to enjoy. And one reason I love it so much is that it tastes so good and it's made in less than 30 minutes. It can be made in less than 30 minutes and it requires very few ingredients. All right guys, before we go into the cooking action, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, give me your birthday gift. <laughs> give me your birthday gift by subscribing to the channel and joining this beautiful family. And of course, if you like this video after watching it, please kindly give us a thumbs up because it makes us super duper excited when we see all of your likes. All right, now we can go into the cooking action. Start by adding the all-purpose flour into a mixing bowl. You can also use some self-rising flour if that's what you have available, but be sure to reduce the amount of baking powder added in the next step. Next, add some baking powder followed by some white sugar, then grate in some nutmeg and sprinkle some salt. Give it a good mix to combine. Afterwards, make a hole in the center of the flour and crack open two very cold eggs. The melted butter goes in next and then half of the cold milk. It's always advisable to put the liquid in bits, that way you are able to control the consistency of the dough. Mix together to combine the dry and the wet ingredients. Obviously, I'll be needing more liquid so I add a little more and then I mix again to combine. I always like to clean up as I go guys because I do not like to work on a very messy surface. Now because my dough hasn't come together quite yet, I go ahead and add more liquid. Then I mix again. Using a wooden spatula makes the mixing a lot easier and that's why I had to change spatulas. If not, you can use your hand or an electric mixer if you have one. At this point, a dough is formed, but the texture or consistency isn't right yet, so I go ahead and add more cold liquid. My liquid of choice is always milk, but you can use cold water as well. But ensure that whatever liquid you're using is very cold, okay? I continue mixing for a further 2-3 to three minutes, and at this point, the consistency of the dough is not quite there yet, and then I add a little more water. I decided to show this process in detail to show you how you can control the consistency and the texture of the dough. You don't want the dough too stiff and at the same time you don't want it runny. In all, I used about one and a half cups of cold liquid and it may differ for you regardless of whether you use the same quantity of flour as I used. Okay, so you definitely would want to add your liquid in bits. Continue mixing for another 3-5 to five minutes until the dough is light and sticky just like this. This is the perfect consistency you want to achieve a very rich and fluffy bun. You guys, I promise you the mixing process may take some time and muscle work but it's totally worth it in the end. I mixed all together for about 7-8 to eight minutes, adding my water in bits. Thank you. 
Afterwards, place the bowl on the countertop and allow the dough rest for about 10 minutes. While it is resting, heat up some vegetable oil in a pan on medium heat. To make this dough into some yummy buns, all the palm of your hands. Alternatively, you can use water. Then use your four fingers to pack up some dough. Afterwards, grab the dough by pulling it up against the bowl and then use your thumb to push it out to form a round shape and transfer to the hot oil gently. Let's try this again, it's not that hard. Pack up some dough with your four fingers and grab the small dough and push it out with your thumb to form a round shape. and then transfer it into the hot oil. Alternatively, you can use an ice cream scoop for this if that's what you have available. You don't have to worry about getting the perfect round mold. When the dough comes in contact with the hot oil, the heat inflates the dough and causes it to expand. As it expands, it starts to form into the perfect round shape. You will see this as we progress. Ensure that your oil is not too hot guys, if not the dough will brown too quickly before it has time to cook through. Frying takes about 10 to 13 minutes per batch, so it's always advisable to set your heat to medium low. Please don't overcrowd the pan so each bun has enough room to expand and cook nicely without interruptions. The exterior part of the buns is not supposed to be as smooth as that of puff puff. You want it quite rough and crunchy because that's where the beauty of rock buns is. Move things around once in a while to allow for even browning, but most importantly, keep a close eye on it and adjust the temperature of the heat if need be. When it is fully browned, oh, look at those gorgeousness, guys. <laughs> When they're fully browned, take them out with a slotted spoon and transfer to a plate or sieve lined with paper towel. Then proceed to frying another batch. I find that the second batches are always finer than the first ones. All in all, just ensure you breathe, relax and go through the process easily and you will end up with the perfect Nigerian rock bonds. These bones can keep in the fridge for up to one week and I like to store them up in foil plates or foil wraps or any Tupperware and just place them in the refrigerator. I enjoy them as a snack with some fresh juice or as a main meal with some scrambled eggs or a sauce or sometimes with a smoothie. Whichever way you choose to go, just ensure you enjoy it, okay? So there's no way I'm going to leave here without having a taste of this yumminess. I'm going to eat it on behalf of all of you until you guys have the time to go ahead and make yours. Mm. Mm. I'm not even joking though. When you make this snack, I promise you, you would overeat it. No matter how much you want to exercise or exhibit self-control, you eat more than you should. But you know what? It's okay. <laughs> If you make a lot, like I said, you can preserve it in the refrigerator. Just wrap it in a foil paper or a foil plate or any other place that has a good lid and leave it there. It stays fresh for up to one week and more. And of course, it can be paired with um, a sauce or a scrambled eggs to make it as a main meal. Or it can just be a snack with a drink of your choice or even a smoothie. Whichever way you go, make sure to enjoy yourself, okay? And if you're requesting this recipe, please kindly take pictures and upload them to my Instagram and Facebook stories and tag me at Delicious Foods so that I can repost on my stories and every other person can be inspired to recreate theirs, okay? Alright guys, I will see you next time with another mouth-watering and delicious recipe. Until then, remember to break out to one another, love yourselves generously, and it's the Queen of Fun and Fast Talking signing out right now. I love you all! <laughs>